In today's video on SQLite, I'm going to talk about functionally independent attributes. When designing data tables, it is important to keep the attributes of functionally or keep the functionally independent of each other. Why? Because when attributes are functionally dependent, you are less likely to have bugs and you usually don't have to write as much code. The challenge of data schema design is to uh, keep table attributes independent of each other. In this video, I'll, I'll show you a bad example and the good example. Now, let's start by firing up SQL Lite 3. Okay, and I'll create a table. Okay, whoops. Paste. So, we're going to create a table. It's called X-Men, and it's got a name string, an approximate age, uh, and is curly hair, which is a Boolean field, and is straight hair, which is also a Boolean field. So just to, I guess, describe some X-Men. Now let's um, insert some data into the table. Let's insert data for a curly, sorry, for a straight haired J and a curly haired K. Okay, in SQLite, keep in mind that uh, false is zero, as you see here, and uh, true is one, so J is not curly, is straight, and K is curly and not straight. Okay, now, suppose you look at this data, uh, let's, let's do a select just to make sure. And you'll notice that it's Jay, he's age 33, and uh, he's he has uh, straight hair. And K is 22 and has curly hair. Now, suppose you look at the data a year later without knowing when the data was entered. Immediately, the age is wrong, because the age is implicitly dependent on when the data was entered. We say that the age is, quote, functionally dependent on the date of data entry. In this situation, you would have a you have bad data that couldn't be fixed accurately. To kind of fix it, you would have to guess when K and J were added, and then add a field to the table, and hope for the best. Not a good way to design your data. Okay, and that's because again, the uh, approximate age is functionally dependent on today's date. I'll give you another example in the same table. Um, suppose that K decides to straighten her hair. It would be tempting then just to update the data with the following query. You'll just say, update men set is straight hair equals one, because one is true. Okay, and this seems right, so let's see. Yes. Now the problem is Jay's hair is fine, but in this one, okay, so in the update we said that is straight hair equals one, because you want to straighten your hair, and it says K hair is curly and is straight. Like you'll notice before, it was uh, straight and not curly, now it's straight and curly. That can't be. <laughs> and, and the reason is the is straight hair attribute um, being it, for it to be true, it depends on the is curly hair attribute being false. I, they, in real life, they both can't be true and they both can't be false. Unless you have somebody who's bald, but that's beyond the scope of this video. Um, so the correct way to update this uh, table properly would be to do the following query. Update up to X-Men set is straight hair equals true. Oh, actually that should be a zero. Oh, sorry, a one. Um, is curly hair equals zero, where name equals K. Okay, now if we do select, you'll see that K now has straight hair and not curly hair. Now, this is a trivial example. It's a small table, and you know 
wouldn't be too hard to realize that you actually have to update both fields. Um, but there are lots of systems where one table may have a large number of attributes. Uh, I've, I've worked on systems where, you know, the number of fields in the table goes on for three or four lines, where is curly hair might be functionally dependent on some attribute buried five lines or six lines down with, not, with a non-intuitive name. And it would be only natural to update you say, if you're fixing a bug, you say, oh yeah, she's straight. Well, you just set is curly hair equals zero. Um, uh, and and you would think that's the only thing you've got to do. But over time, you could end up having data that's internally inconsistent. And that internal inconsistency happened because those two attributes, is curly hair and is straight hair, are functionally dependent. So how do you fix the problem? Well, first of all, you got to pick data fields that are invariant and independent of each other. For example, we know that the date of birth doesn't change for people the way age does every year. Once you have a date of birth, that's your date of birth. The other thing we know is hair texture is probably a better name for an attribute that capture and that captures the value of the other the attributes is curly hair and is straight hair. In fact, you can just say hair texture equals curly or hair texture equals straight. And that's probably good enough. And you have one attribute instead of two functionally dependent attributes. Let's see what happens if we try it. So first we'll create a table and we'll call it Zedmin. Uh, again, we'll create a table Zedmin with a name string, a date of birth, which is of the date time type, and a hair texture, which is just a string. Obviously, when you're designing a real database, you'll put you'll put some good check constraints on it so that uh, you don't end up entering garbage. But that's beyond the scope of this video. Now I will enter some data into the table. So again, we have J who was born in 77 has straight hair and K who was born in 88 and has curly hair. Yeah, right. Um, now because yeah, because the age is dependent on the current date, you never have to worry about the age field getting stale or old because it's not there. So let's let's try it now and see to get the age the query is a little bit more complicated. You have to say select the name and then as the approximate age you go date now minus the date of birth field. Now date now is today's date. Okay and so here's what we get. Uh, J is 34 and K is 23. Um, I'll just do a select date now and you'll see that you get February 16th, 2011. And SQLite does have arithmetic functions for taking the difference of dates. So in a year, that'll be 2012, February 16th, and these numbers will go up by one. So therefore, you know that we know that this date, this date of birth field is no longer functionally dependent on today's date. And that is good because now you don't ever have to worry about fixing your data. The next thing I'm going to try to do is let's say K wants to change her hair from curly to straight. This query is actually easier. You just say update, set, update Zedmin set hair texture equals straight where name equals K and if you do select whoops if you select star from Zedmin now you have two people with straight hair. Again, you don't have to keep two different attributes up to date at the same time because they're functionally dependent. The 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 hair texture um, is functionally a functionally independent uh, variable, and therefore the data will stay consistent. Having functionally independent attributes lets you avoid writing code to manage data that could become inconsistent because a software developer didn't know about the functional dependency, and that happens a lot. It does take some extra work up front because 
you have to put some thought in checking attributes against each other uh, to ensure that they are functionally independent. And you often need to figure out a formula to calculate data that is derived from the attributes of the table. You know, quantities such as age or averages, those sorts of things. But again, SQLite and other databases do give you that functionality. So if you design your tables with functionally independent attributes, you're going to end up writing less code, you'll have fewer bugs, and this is all good.